new this morning. Yet another shooting in Albuquerque overnight. The third one in just two nights. This one is minor. But as I told you yesterday morning, the one the night before was deadly. Now here's how last night's went down. We were told a police officer heard a gunshot during a traffic stop here near 4th Street in San Lorenzo. He saw a car take off and told other officers what that car looked like. Immediately, the place was swarming with police and Bernalillo County Sheriff's deputies. That car they were looking for was found with two people inside. A man who was shot and who was rushed to the hospital. Again, he'll be okay. And a woman who was taken in for questioning. We should get an update on this a little bit later today. And Albuquerque police are still looking for answers in a shooting that happened about 1030 Tuesday night that killed a 15 year old boy. It happened near Gibson and Broadway. A friend told police he was picking up the boy when someone in a green Lexus started shooting. That 15 year old Owen Chavez was hit and killed again just 15 years old. We are told the Lexus is a two toned older model with green above the molding and wood grain or brown below the molding and chrome rims. A man and woman were seen inside the car. If you have seen it or seen them, please call police. Well, how much is a bathroom break worth? Well, it turns out about $750,000. That's how much hundreds of prisoners will split in a lawsuit settlement against the state's corrections department. The suit was filed after inmates were forced to strip down and sit front to back for long periods of time. Some say they had to do this at least four times at the prison in Los Lunas in 2009 and 2010. Some inmates soiled themselves because they weren't allowed to use the restroom. Corrections officials say the seating policy helps prison inmates maintain control, prison officials rather maintain control in a chaotic situation. But now as part of that settlement, the Corrections Department agreed to modify its policy in times of unrest or emergency. A judge still has to approve the settlement. Happening now at 503, there's a new place in Albuquerque that'll be taking care of lots of families for years to come. New 13 Samantha McDonald is live at the new Loveless Healthcare Center to the northeast part of town. Good morning, Sam. How's this place going to help out? Good morning, Matt. Yes, I'm here at the new healthcare center and I spoke to some doctors here. They say there was a specific need to serve more families in this area of Albuquerque. They say in total they could serve up to 15,000 residents. It opened this month to serve patients of all ages from pediatrics to geriatrics. The center will offer family medicine and disease management with a special emphasis on prevention, early diagnosis and wellness. There will also be an emphasis on women's health care and the clinic accepts most insurance plans. You can go to the Loveless website for more information. The clinic's chief medical officer says the goal is to provide more primary care for people because a lot of people aren't getting it. We have an access problem in the country, let alone in Albuquerque, in the greater Albuquerque area. We need more primary care. We need more access to health care. There will be a ribbon cutting ceremony to, to celebrate the opening of this clinic at 10 a.m. today. And I'm also told there will be another uh, clinic being set up in January. It will be off Paseo and Holbrook. Matt, back to you. All right, thank you, Samantha. Looks like that's going to help out a lot of people. 505 coming up on that. Now we're talking about the flooding here. Now another six families are without homes after raging floodwaters from the Rio trauma swept over land about 10 miles north of Española. The waters came in hard and fast about three yesterday afternoon. Six homes swamped by water five feet deep and another four or five homes flooded by about a foot and a half of water. Many of the families were at work and school when this happened and the floodwaters came in. The Rio Arriba County leaders say those who were not did manage to get out safely. There was a lot of family members and friends um, of the people whose homes were affected parked in front of their homes trying to fill up sandbags and trying to help out as much as possible. By last night, the water had gone down quite a bit. The county opened a shelter at the Española Senior Center. Uh, today, they'll be mopping up and taking a look at all of the damage. And anyone who does need to evacuate can go to the Beatrice Martinez Senior Center located at 735 Vietnam Veterans Road. It's one of 11 evacuation centers the Red Cross has set up right here in New Mexico. Well, crews with the city of Albuquerque have been mopping up a mudslide mess that left mounds of dirt outside all of these homes on the west side. Remember all that rain we got last weekend? Well, it caused dirt from Petroglyph Monument to slide down, go through a cinder block wall, shatter that thing, and fill up people's backyards and in some cases parts of their homes. About 20 homes here off Unser were affected by this mud damage. At the urging of City Councilor Ken Sanchez and Mayor Barry, city crews removed a lot of that dirt yesterday. 
Oh yeah, yeah. This is nice. This is nice that this is happening because, you know, it's. This didn't come from my yard. It came through my yard, you know. Yeah, so, but I mean, it seems like we're all in this together. Councilor Sanchez says if there's another big rainstorm, he's afraid this type of thing could happen again and possibly again. So he wants to work out a plan to build a barrier to go ahead and protect those homes. Well, another big concern for all of us is the standing water and what that could attract. The city's environmental health department says flooded parks like Mariposa Basin here in northwest Albuquerque are a great breeding ground for our best friend, the mosquito. With those tiny pests comes a possibility of a quite deadly disease, West Nile. They're not going to be developing as fast as what we saw right after those initial rains in July when we we're in the 90s, mid 90s. So development's going to be a little slower, but until we get that first frost, we're, we're still can have some mosquito development going on. Three new cases of West Nile were reported by the state yesterday. There have been a total of at least 10 in New Mexico this year, two of them deadly. And with all of these storms, it's a good idea to look out for scammers. The Attorney General's office is urging people only to donate to known and trusted charities and be wary of those ones that seem to have sprung up overnight. Always people looking to rip you off. Other tips include asking questions of callers and not to give out your credit card or other information unless a charity is known to be reputable. And if you want to help a reputable charity, we're going to help you this morning. At 7 o'clock, flip on over to Two Casa Fox on Two Casa this morning in Two Casa style. We're going to have a Red Cross phone bank. The Red Cross helping out hundreds, even thousands of people here. Their funds are low. You can help them out. Again, that's from 7 to 9 o'clock on our sister station, Two Casa Fox.